Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Alsa Petite, welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial I will demonstrate how to make this simple wristlet. The pattern for this exact version is available for free on my Facebook group, however you can check out my blog post uh, where I explain in more details how to draft your own pattern in any size you want. You can make a plain and simple wristlet like this one, where the front and back is made out of a single piece of fabric. However, if you want to be more creative, you can divide the front panel into a separate sections. There are no limits here and you can make as many variations as you want. In this tutorial, I am making this version of my simple wristlet. So I divided my front panel into three parts for added detail. I kept the back panel as a one piece but you can always repeat the pattern that you've made for the front panel and cut those pattern pieces twice. There is a detachable wristlet strap attached to a side D-ring. The simple wristlet opens at the top with a zipper and the main compartment is fully lined. I wanted to keep my wristlet as simple as possible so there are no internal pockets but you can easily add a slip or a zipper pocket if you wish to. In the description box below you will find links to all supplies I used in this tutorial and also links to the pattern and my blog post. If you want to learn how to make this simple wristlet, then keep on watching! To complete today's project you will need some external fabric and lining fabric. For my external pieces I am going to mix colors of this lovely wax canvas and for the lining, I am using a waterproof fabric. If you are working with quilting cotton, stretch or fraying fabric, you may want to fuse some woven interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric first. And if you prefer more structured look, also consider using some stabilizer, such as Decoville Light or Foam. Additionally, you will need a number 5 zipper. The length of the zipper will depend on the size of your simple wristlet. 1 inch swivel hook, and a D-ring. This is optional, but I will be using rivets on my wristlet strap, so I will also need a hole puncher and a hand press to set those in, a ruler to take some measurements, some clips to hold the fabric in place, double-sided tape might be useful today, and also a hump jumper to help with those bulky seams. You might need a thread, hand needle and a thimble, to close the opening in the lining, your favorite marking tools, seam ripper in case if something goes wrong, and lastly a pair of scissors and snips. For this particular style, you will need one main piece for the back from the external fabric, plus two pieces from your lining fabric. Depending on how you divided the main panel, the amount and shape of the pieces for the external front may vary for you. But what is important here is to label them correctly and if you are using a directional print, make sure to mark a fabric grain line on each pattern piece. Once all pieces are cut, lay them on the table right side up the way they should be when assembled, so you know exactly which seam to do first and which is the last. Additionally, you will need to cut one zipper tab from the external fabric, one connector from the external fabric, one wristlet strap from the external fabric, the length of which may differ for you, but the sewing steps are the same. Take your strap and on the wrong side of the fabric, mark a line in the center. If you cannot press your fabric, take a double-sided tape and apply it on each side of the line. Otherwise, bring the long raw edge towards the line and press it flat with an iron, then repeat on the other side. Since I'm working with a wax canvas, I will do most of my pressing by hand today. Now you can fold the strap in half, take the swivel hook and fit the strap in. You can unfold it on both sides, then with right sides facing each other, line up the short edges and pin them together. We're going to sew the seam one centimeter from the edge. Open the seam and press it flat. You can also trim the seam allowance to reduce the bulk. 
refold the edges, then fold the strap in half and use clips to hold everything in place. Just like that. When you are ready, take this to the machine and stitch 2mm away from both edges. Locate the seam and line it up just behind the swivel hook. Then you can install a rivet or stitch a box to finish the wristlet strap. I will only install a rivet, so first I need to punch a hole in the center, insert one of the double cup rivets, then I can set it in using a hand press. Take the connector and fold the longer edges towards the middle, the same way you've done it for the wristlet strap. You can press it with an iron, then we're going to top stitch along both sides. Take a D-ring and wrap the connector around the straight edge. Make sure the raw edges are hidden inside, then you can base the short edge. Now we're going to assemble the external front pieces, so make sure you have the correct labels. First we're going to work on a piece A and B, so flip piece A and line it up right sides together on top of the piece B. You will notice that there is a 1cm excess on each end that is necessary to ensure we sew the seam correctly. Pin it together, then sew the seam using 1cm seam allowance. You should start and end your seam exactly where the fabric crosses. After you've sewn the seam, open the seam allowance and press it flat. Then we can top stitch alongside the seam on both sides. Trim off that small excess of fabric on both sides. Next, you can flip piece C and with right sides together, line up both angled edges. Again, make sure you have the excess fabric on both sides. Hold it with clips and sew the seam using 1cm seam allowance. Once again, you can open the seam allowance, press it flat and top stitch on both sides. When you have external front panel assembled, double check if it is the same size as your back piece. You can always trim it if something is not right. Now we're going to attach the connector to the side of the front panel. If you are left-handed, you're going to place it along the right side edge of the front. If, like me, you are right-handed, then you need to position it along the left side edge. Measure about 2.5 cm from the top edge, line up the connector and clip it in place. Then base it about 5 mm from the edge, going back and forth a couple of times. On the right side of the fabric, mark a notch 1.5 cm from each side edge on both the front and back panels. Measure the distance between both notches, for me it is about 23 cm. Remember the number or write it down, we will need it in a minute. Take the zipper tab and fold the longer edges, wrong sides together towards the center. Next, fold it in half making sure both folded edges are aligned. 
Take the zipper and open it. We're going to insert the end of the zipper into the zipper top. Just like that. Now carefully stitch along that edge. Trim off the excess fabric. Then grab a ruler because we're going to measure and mark the distance between the notches. If you cannot remember, just re-measure it, either on the front or back panel. Open the zipper and pinch the zipper tape at the notch. You can just fold the zipper onto itself, then you're going to bring that fold towards the zipper teeth. Just like that. You need to pin it in place, then repeat the process on the other notch. Double check if your zipper is folded evenly on both sides. Then take it to the machine, baste the folds and trim off the excess tape. Take the front panel and at this point you will need to decide which way you want the zipper to open. I like my zippers to open from left to right. Place the zipper facing down and line it up between both notches. Pin it in place. We're going to base the zipper about 5mm from the edge. Take one of the lining pieces and with right side facing down, place it on top. Line it up and pin along the top edge. Sew the seam using 7mm seam allowance. Now open the panels and press the seam allowance towards the external front. When you are ready, top stitch along the zipper. You can flip the lining and press the seam flat. After that, take the external back panel and locate your two notches. Place it right sides down and to see what you are doing, flip everything over to the other side. Line up the zipper between both notches and pin everything together. You can baste everything first, otherwise take the remaining lining piece and with right side facing down, line it up on top. Move the clips to hold everything together, then sew the seam using 7mm seam allowance. Press the seam allowance towards the external back piece and top stitch along the zipper. Open the zipper halfway through, then with right sides together, place the external front and back panels together on one side and the lining pieces together on the other side. Line up the seams and pin it around. Mark an opening along the lining bottom seam. Then you can sew around all four sides. To make sure the lining fits better inside the wristlet, use 1 cm seam allowance along the external panels. However, on the lining, start at 1 cm, sew the side seam, slowly increasing the seam up to 1.5 cm. At the bottom edge, use 1.5 cm on both short seams, and then sew the seam at an angle on the other side.
You can trim the seam allowance by half, but leave the bottom edge with the opening at full seam allowance. When you are ready, reach inside, open the zipper completely, and using that opening, turn the entire wristlet right side out. Line up the edges around the opening and clip them in place. You can either use the sewing machine and top stitch close to the edge, or close the opening by hand using a ladder stitch, whichever you prefer. If necessary, give your simple wristlet a final press, clip on the wristlet strap, and you are good to go. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up, so I know you like the content, and I can create more videos like this one. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already, so you don't miss any awesome videos in the future. See you next time! Stay crafty, friends!